Hello guys, welcome to my channel guys. Today I am going to explain you about the topic uh, uh, anatomy of file read and file write in uh, HDFS. So we know that uh, basically Hadoop uh, is uh, consisting of uh, two important files like uh, HDFS and uh, YAN. So what is this HDFS? HDFS is basically used for the storage purpose. Right. See, if we are having the large amounts of data like uh, megabytes, gigabytes, petabytes and more than that also we can store in a distributed manner guys. So, that is why we are going to use this HDFS basically for the storage purpose and to manage all the resources uh, in a distributed manner we need uh, uh, one equipment right. Uh, it is like one equipment where we can manage all these resources, one head we need. So, that head itself is our yarn here. YAN is basically responsible for managing the resources on the data nodes, right. So, here uh, this is the thing and one more important thing is as we are having the large amount of data in the HDFS, uh, uh, we can't read and write the files in uh, such an easiest manner as if we can do it in the normal file system guys. So, what we are going to do it here means uh, we are going to uh, have some see all these characteristics uh, you can uh, understand uh, see what are the characteristics of uh, fault tolerance is there scalability we can extend up to how much uh, amount of nodes that much we want and it is completely distributed storage that we know and it is a um, purely reliable one uh, and it is highly available at each and every time your data will be available because as we are maintaining all the replicated copies of our data here and it is very cost effective why because all the tools are completely open source and free and high throughput we are going to get here and what are the building blocks of the Hadoop? How do we know that basically one master node will be there and one slave node will be there so that master node is called as the name node and one data node is called as the one uh, data node will be there which is called as the slave node here and uh, in addition to that we are having one backup node will be there which is called as the uh, secondary name nodes and we are having the job trackers and as well as the task trackers are there. So, these are the basic building components of the Hadoop. So, first uh, from your examination point of view these are important guys. This diagram is very very important. So, let me explain you this how the file read can be done in the HDFS guys. See how the anatomy this is one of the important question in unit 4. There may be a chance of getting this question in your examination. So, be careful and listen guys till the end of the uh, video. See, I will explain you in a very simplest manner here. See, we are having the HDFS client will be there. If you want to read any files which are already stored in the HDFS, what we have to do means we have to use this uh, open function. We have to use this uh, open function here and uh, by with the help of this open function, I am going to send it to the distributed system. From the distributed system, with the help of the remote processor call, I am going to send, I want to find out from the name node uh, where my particular file is located in these data nodes. I am having three data nodes. See, if you look at here, I am having three data nodes are there, but I do not know where my file is located. So, I want to know the address of that particular file location. So, how I will get my address of that file location means always master node will be the name node. So, this is going to maintain all the information of your files where those are resided in the data nodes. So, from there I am going to get this is not black guys this is block locations this is block locations here. So, from there what I will do I am going to send the uh, read request function to the FS data input stream file system data input stream is very responsible here for handling all the reading and the writing of those things uh, into the data nodes here. So, this entire part is uh, will be done in the client JVM. Client JVM it is nothing but the client Java virtual machine here. So, this whenever it is going to get the read functionality, read method is uh, initiated here. So, automatically it is going to fetch. So, if it got the already the block locations from the name node, it will fetch all the information from these data nodes. If it is here, well and good, okay. Otherwise, it will go to this node. Otherwise, it will go to this node and it will try to fetch that particular file and it will start reading the files. So, this is the uh, complete picturization of this uh, file reading here. But we have to write in while writing the examination, we have to write like this. That is the step by step things we have to write. One is first step process is see here. Client will open the file and uh, he will start. Uh, he want to uh, read the files by using the function which is called as the open function. So, which is called as the file system object. 
for which HDFS is an instance of the distributed file system here. So, this distributed DFS, it is going to call the name node using the, what is that? Uh, RPC. RPC is called as the remote processor call from where we are going to get the locations of the few blocks of the file. So, for each and every block, uh, the name node, it will returns the addresses of the data nodes, uh, uh, which will have uh, a copy of that block will be there. This DFS, it is going to return uh, an FS input data input stream here to the client. Uh, uh, to read the data from the FS data input stream, it is going to wrap this D DFS input stream which manages the data node and the name node here. Right? Uh, this is the step 2 here where simply we can call it like from the DFS we are going to call the name node by using the remote processor call to get the locations and whenever we got the locations we are going to use the FS data input stream with the help of the data input stream we are going to fetch the files which are there in the data nodes here. And in the step 3, the client will cause the read on the stream here and this data uh, DFS input stream which has uh, stored the info node addresses for the primary few blocks here uh, which will connect the primary data node to the primary block in the file. So, the data is streamed from the uh, data node back to the client here. So, whatever the data we are going to get from the data node, again we have to send it to the client node, right? which will until we get that one that means uh, continuously it is going to call the repeat function why it, it is going to call the read function here why because if i have fetched my file from the first uh, location here okay well and good there itself our task is completed otherwise if i didn't get any uh, file from that particular data node what i will do i will go and fetch the another data node again with the same read function so, that is why this read function will be called repeatedly on that particular stream. So, whenever it is going to reach the end of the block here, automatically DF input stream will close the data node connections here. Completely it is going to close the data node connections which will find the best data node for the next block here. Next, it will go to the completely another block and it will start fetching the uh, files again from that another blocks here each and every block will consist of files here again and uh, this is completely transparent to the clients all these things will be known to the clients here until we get all the files uh, we are going to read the each and every data node here so after that uh, it is going to uh, close all the connections here. So, whenever the client has finished reading the file, a function is called again, uh, it is going to call the close function uh, to the FS data input stream. This is the entire step by step process. One structure will be there where to read the files and uh, where to write the files. That is why it is called as the anatomy of the file read and file write. So, now we will see how the file write will be done. This is the entire thing where we can read the files in the HDFS uh, using this particular diagrammatic repre representations. Next to if you come to this file right here, see again this file right also it will be in the same manner, uh, but uh, a complete a different diagram we have given how to write the files here. Right, uh, see first step is we are going to use the open function here again to the distributed file system where with the help of the open functionality we are going to uh, create the files by using the create method I am going to use it here uh, for creating the files using the distributed file system. Next uh, what this DFS it will do it will make say RPS call to the name node to create a new file in the file system namespace. So what it will do this DFS it is completely responsible for creating the files here and uh, first uh, if you want to create the first first it has to check uh, whether in the data nodes already the same file names are there or not, right. So, we have to make sure that file uh, it should not exist in the data nodes here. If it is already exist and we are trying to create the file with the same names means we are going to get the exceptions here. It is going to throw the exceptions like uh, IO exceptions here. That is very, very important. So, here uh, not FS data input stream, here data output stream is responsible for writing the data, for writing the data, remember carefully here, for writing the data, we need the FS data output stream here. But for reading the data, we need the FS data input stream here. So, because the client will write the data here, uh, DFS output stream will split the packet into an, so if you want to write any files here, it is going to split your data in the form of packets guys. So, these packets we are going to write into an indoor queue called the info queue, it is called as an 
InfoQ. So, this data Q it is consumed by the data streamer where it is going to ask for the name node to allocate the new blocks uh, by picking an inventory of the suitable data nodes uh, to store the replicas here. If you want to store any replicas, again it will ask the another name node to store the replicas of these uh, file writes. So, not only one file I will write. See, once if you are writing any file, again I need to create the two more duplicate copies. So, it is going to ask where I should write these two more duplicated copies here. So, from the inventory, I will find the suitable data nodes and I will start writing that files into these, uh, these things here. And the list of data nodes forms uh, whatever the data nodes that which you want to write, those all will forms like a pipeline. It will forms like a pipeline where you will assume that the replication level is 3. Okay, now each and every time by default the replication factor is 3 here. So, there are 3 nodes in the pipeline. How many nodes will be there guys? Only 3 nodes will be there in the pipeline here. And the data streamer, it will streams the packets to the primary data node within the pipeline. First primary data node, whatever the first data node that which I am going to write that is called as the primary data node and which will stores each and every packet and all these packets again I am going to store it in the second data node and then in the third data node like that uh, it will be goes on. Next uh, the second data node what it will do it will store the packet and it will forward the third data node which is in the pipeline right. Next, uh, DFS output stream, it will sustain the internal queue of the packets that are awaiting uh, to be acknowledged by the data nodes. So, again we are having one acknowledgement queue. It is not that simply writing the files. After writing, again I should get the acknowledgement back. Right. So, after getting the acknowledgement back, uh, uh, what I will do? HDFS write ones read many models or it will follow the uh, one read many models here. See, uh, let me go to the diagram. See, this is the open functionality with the help of the open functionality by using the distributed file system. Mm, we are going to use this uh, create method for creating the files in the HDFS. We are going to send the information to the name node whether any files are there or not in the name node. If any same files are there, what I will do? I will try to, uh, I will not create the files here. Otherwise, I am going to get, uh, get the errors if I am going to create with the same file names here. Then what is the third step? I want to write the files with the help of the, so I am sending the request to the FS data output stream. What this data FS stream it will send sir, it will start writing the data in terms of the packets where we are going to store it in the info queue guys. So this is called as writing the packets. Sir. Uh, so pipelining of the data nodes means I told you now I want to maintain the three copies of the files here. So one copy I am going to write it here. Second copy I am going to write it here and third copy I am going to write it here. These all these three nodes are called as the pipelines which are there in that uh, data nodes. See first I have written it here and I will send the acknowledgement back to the FS data stream. The same copy again I will send to this particular data node. Again I will send the acknowledgement back. Next I will send the information to the data node and again I will get the acknowledgement back. See whenever you are going to get the acknowledgement back we are going to get the acknowledgement back from the last data node to the second data node and from the second data node to the primary data node and to the finally FS data output stream. Right. So, like this again after that we will try to close the connections to the FS data output stream guys. So, this is the entire thing where how the file write can be done in the HDFS. Try to write all these things in terms of the points so that you will get a very good marks. So, thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video guys. Hope you like this video. Please like, share and subscribe my channel guys.